Today I'm going to show you how to use Firefox, Safari, and Chrome with Tor. First, we need to go and download the Tor source code. So to do that, just open a web browser, go to torproject.org, and then go download Tor. And we're actually going to go over to the right hand side here and go to all downloads. And we're just going to download the source code. So, we want to get the, the stable version, the regular version. Just click the download. We're going to save this. Now that we have downloaded our source code, we're going to open terminal. We're going to change directories to the downloads folder or wherever you saved the file to. We're going to unzip it. Uh, you could do this um, through the GUI, but I'm just going to do it through tar. So now we're going to change the directory we just created. Okay, first we're going to do dot slash configure. This is just going to configure it for the system. Now that that's done, we're going to do make. Now it's actually building the executable. Okay. Now that it's all built, we're going to do make space install. And this is just going to install it. Oh. Do sudo make install and then enter your password. There we go. So now to run it, just type in tor. And there we go. It's all running. So now to actually use this, I'm going to open um, Firefox. We're going to go to Firefox preferences, advanced, the network, and configure how Firefox connects to the internet. What we're going to do is we're going to tell it to use a proxy server. So select manual proxy configuration, we're going to use SOX, and the host is going to be 127.0.0.1, and the port is going to be 9050. This is how Tor is configured by default. You can change these settings uh, inside Tor, it's a little bit complicated, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's not usually necessary. And then we're just going to hit OK. And then I can exit that. And so now if I go towards my IP, there, I'm using an IP address that's not mine, obviously. So to do the same thing in Safari, just open Safari, and you go Preferences, Advanced, and then down here at the bottom, there's proxies, go change settings. And this is actually going to change your uh, entire networking settings. So to do this, it's going to it's going to also work for um, for Chrome, just just because it's going to change how most of the connections on your system connect to the Internet. Not all of them, though, so be aware of that. So you're going to select socks. You're going to select proxies and socks proxy. And then you're going to enter the same thing, 127.0.0.1, port 9050. Okay. Go ahead and click Apply. And then we can close that out. Close that. And then, that's my IP. And there we go. And just to check with Chrome real quick. Too many requests. <laughs> This is a Cloudflare protection that prevents uh, sites from being DDoSed and stuff like that. Okay, so we've obviously changed IP addresses in that time frame. Having this running in terminal, it'll show you some random information when it happens. So it looks like it was trying to connect to something and couldn't get through. Um, and so it, it changed IP addresses there. That's why we have a different one. All right. So that's pretty much all there is. One more thing I want to point out is um, if you go to torproject.org, 
click download. There's a list of things that don't work with Tor or um, that can be used to identify you, etc. So you do want to be careful. You should look through this list and be careful what you do online. This is the Tor browser bundle. You can download in Firefox these same plugins. So you can have NoScript, you can have uh, SSL everywhere. Uh, I believe that's what that's called. Or HTTPS everywhere. And that should help you be a little bit more secure in general. Another thing to note when using Tor this way is that not everything connects through it. So if I go curl and then curl my IP.com, this is my actual IP address. It, it didn't connect through Tor. So just be aware of that, that not everything's going to connect through it. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it um, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Normally, it's really simple to install the Tor browser. All you pretty much have to do is just download it and then open it. But there are a couple caveats with installing it in Kali, and I'll go over this. Today I'm going to show you how to brute force a uh, website login using Hydra. There's the IP address for the host, the login name is root, and the password is 557. So if I go back to the form, root, and then 557, sign in, and that's it. Very simple. One thing that might be helpful if you were trying to mitigate against this type of an attack would be... I'm going to show you how to perform a low bandwidth denial of service attack that is quite effective against um, a, a large amount of uh, websites, mostly Apache host machine, the victim machine. If I actually refresh Apache, <laughs> it's not even coming up. I didn't do it quick enough. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install Kali on VirtualBox. Uh, Kali is a penetration testing operating system. You'll want to open VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. I'm selecting to use the encrypted drive just because it has a few more steps in the setup process and the login in process so that I can document it. This is the login screen. Your username is root, R-O-O-T, and the password is the password that you entered when you first installed Kali. 